on a roller coaster ride of legal developments for Donald Trump tonight. The former president experiencing both the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat all in a single day. Two rulings issued just about an hour apart here in New York. And tonight he and we have new dates, new deadlines and new dollar amounts. First, the bad news, if you're Donald Trump tonight, April 15th, tax day, is the day that Donald Trump is going to become the first former president to face a criminal trial. It's perhaps the only one that might be held before the election, based on what we know now. And the judge in the Stormy Daniels hush money case flatly denying his legal team's efforts to delay the trial any further or to toss it out altogether, sending Trump on a tear as he left the court courtroom today. I'd like the trial to start in 21 days or something. And I don't know how you can have a trial that's going on right in the middle of an election. Not fair. Should have been started three years ago if they were going to start it at all. And then you wouldn't be quibbling over what week it's going to end. Days. They didn't start it because they didn't know I'd be running. And they didn't know how well I'd do. That is not why this criminal trial is about to start. But ironically enough, when he was asked earlier if he was worried that a conviction could actually cost him the 2024 election, Trump said this. Well, it could also make me more popular because the people know it's a scam. The former president, as you might expect after hearing a comment like that one, is planning to turn the courtroom drama into the campaign trail and to play the victim. Really, though, only time will tell if it'll pay off for him. There was a ruling that did get Donald Trump's respect, as he put it today, that's the one by a New York appeals court at the 11th hour, cutting that bond that he has to pay by more than half as he appeals his civil fraud case. It's now $175 million instead of nearly half a billion, and they gave him 10 more days to secure that bond. I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division, and I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. And I thank the appellate division for acting quickly. It speaks to how worried Donald Trump was about that half a billion dollar bond that he is now happy about only having a $175 million one. I have some new reporting tonight. A person familiar with his finances tells me that they do expect Trump will be able to secure that much lower bond within the next 10 days, as the court ordered today. But it won't be without difficulty, and it could also notably reduce the cash that he has available to him. If not for this last hour reprieve, the state could have started seizing his assets today, or as he referred to them this morning, his babies. I want to bring in CNN political analyst and senior political correspondent for The New York Times, Maggie Haberman, who was in that courtroom today as all of this was playing out. What was Trump's demeanor like? So Trump was actually more subdued for part of it than we saw him in the second E. Jean Carroll trial, than he was in the Angoran trial, where he was constantly scowling, shaking his head. He did do some of that, to be clear, and he did start fidgeting. He got most visibly irritated, and this is right before the ruling came down, reducing the size of the bond, as Ju uh, Judge Mer Justice Mershon was questioning Trump's lead lawyer, Todd Blanche, who had a rough morning uh, with the, the justice, the justice, uh, justice Mershon did not uh, believe in what Todd Blanche was saying about why the trial should be delayed, did not believe in what Todd Blanche was saying about why he believed that the DA's office had committed significant misconduct in terms of not uh, turning over specific documents related to Michael Cohen. And this went on and on and on for a while. And Trump was just staring at his lead lawyer as this was going on. Now, my understanding is that Trump was directing his ire toward Mershon, not toward his lawyer. And we know Trump can be very tough on his legal teams. But then he got this reprieve. And so after that, it, he was entirely changed in his demeanor when he came back into the courtroom after You the could recess. tell that his mood had changed. A hundred percent. And he was smiling at somebody in the audience and he sat down and was less irritated. He shook his head and made sort of one of these faces we've come to see him make when the judge set the trial date. Um, but that was unusual this, this morning. What do you think it'll be like, though? I mean, do you think it's set in for him that the trial's actually starting yeah. in three weeks? Absolutely not. Now, I, I'm told that he does understand that um, this is not likely that he's going to win on appeal. It's a slim to none chance in trying to delay this further and that the trial will start in 21 days. Uh, but I don't think this is going to become real for him until we get much closer to it. And Caitlin, I have to say that sitting in that courtroom for him four days a week, it, there's going to be a pause on Wednesdays, but four days a week in, in this very dingy sort of bonfire of the vanities type courtroom, 
um, is going to be a pretty interesting to watch. I mean, for someone, though, who kind of is described as stuck in the 1980s. Correct. Like Preserved people... in amber. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know that being stuck in the Manhattan criminal court is exactly was... <laughs> what he, how, how he had in mind uh, being that way. I mean, and it's not just physically being in court. It's also being there while Michael Cohen could be testifying, Correct. Stormy Daniels, Correct. Karen McTougall. I mean, all of these moments that did not go well for Trump mm -hmm. in the first year of his time in the White House, certainly not with his relationship with Melania Trump. You're getting to the point that a lot of his aides will talk about privately, which is that they they believe there is a chance of a hung jury. In this case, there's always a chance of a hung jury. And, this, you know, that's it just takes one. Um, they know, And they believe that even if he's convicted, that it's not the worst fact set for him in, legally. Now, maybe that's true when you compare it to you know, uh, uh, conspiracy to defraud the, the United States in terms of the J6 trial or the documents case in Florida. But it is a set of personal details that really get under his skin. As you noted, remember, he would, in White House meetings, just start talking about how, uh, you know, he, he didn't actually have an affair with Stormy Daniels, and he would ask people what they thought of uh, calling her horse face and on and on and on. And so this is going to get under his skin. What that means in terms of how he acts outside the courtroom, how he acts on the campaign trail, I think remains to be seen. But we have seen his ire with these cases bleed into his rallies, and I anticipate that will be the same because he's likely going to be doing events on weekends. Well, I mean, he couldn't even stop talking about E. Jean Carroll right. after he was found to have defamed her, well, and he, it was costing him a ton of money. That was when he couldn't stop doing it. He had stopped doing it until he put up that bond, which was more than $90 million. And then when he did that, he started attacking her again. And so... I do think that watching how one thing in court leads to something outside of court is going to be significant for all of us watching this campaign. And, and afterward, he went to 40 Wall Street, one of the properties that, that mm -hmm. could have been seized potentially mm -hmm. by the attorney general in the other case, the mm -hmm. civil fraud case. He held a press conference and you asked him a question, and this is how he answered. Well, I shouldn't have a trial. This is not a trial. This is not a an act of criminality. But you are having one, so do you... I don't know if we're having one. We're going to be appealing right now, I can tell you that. Uh, we did nothing wrong, just like I did nothing wrong in the other case. My statements, my financial statements, were conservative. They were low, not high. I mean, he valued Mar-a-Lago at a tiny fraction of what it is. He made Mar-a-Lago, you know it very well, Maggie. He made Mar-a-Lago into $18 million. Uh, I mean, you were asking about this case, Correct. but he's pivoted very quickly to talking about, even though his bond was cut in less than half, still bothered by that, clearly. Right. Well, I would actually say two things. I think that it, it was the one thing that he could treat like a success. So he tried to push it that way, number one. But number two, and that's, I think, how he was treating it throughout the day. But number two, I asked him about, does he think he can get acquittal? Because as he, you noted, he said at some point during this conversation uh, with reporters, this is a, a scam. You know, this, this trial is a scam, so this will help me. Th these charges are a scam. It'll help me with voters. Well, if you think that, then I don't know why you wouldn't expect an acquittal and just want to get through this. So I was struck by his avoiding the answer. Well, and he was also, at one point, he was also, you know, saying that Biden is directing a lot of this and then saying, well, he didn't know if Biden yeah, well, that's, was competent enough to, to direct it. But he's, but he's, right, he's both a mastermind and not capable of doing it. Right, which it was an argument, sentence. it contradicted right. itself in, in one sentence. But right. on, on his other claim he's been making, that he wanted to use this money to fund his presidential campaign. I mean, he has not, he had not made one utterance of that right. before Friday. No, he posted this on Truth Social, and what was incredible about it was that he posted the idea that, you know, I had all, I have all this cash, and I was going to use it to fund my campaign, but now I have to pay this judgment. And he has not funded his campaign since 2016, and even then, he only partially funded. He, he still raised donations in 2020. He raised a significant amount of money as a sitting president. There has been no indication he was going to self-fund. He's not paying for his own lawyers right now. He is using donations from small-dollar donors to pay for his lawyers and to pay for the lawyers of other people. So that was a, a pretty clear straw man. Now, if he suddenly decides he's going to put a lot of money into his campaign, then we'll all be surprised. He is at a huge disparity with President Biden in terms of fundraising, but uh, I don't expect that's where this is going. On what we're hearing about, that they think that they can cover the 175. Yeah, I've heard something similar. Yeah. But that it'll hurt his, his, what he does have in cash. Yeah, he doesn't have endless operating cash at his company. It's not clear to me if we're talking about actual cash or if we're talking about securities that he would have to liquidate. I don't know what the tax implications are. Um, I, I do think that he will be able to do this more easily 
But 10 days, if he seeks a bond, is not a lot of time. And to your point, if he puts it up in cash, look, they are looking at this to see, and you know, others would have smarter takes on this than I will, I'm not a lawyer, but they are looking at this to see if this means that the uh, appeals court in New York will ultimately reduce the judgment overall. And that's not gonna happen for several months where they make a decision one way or the other. It's still going to hurt him in the short term. Maggie Herbin, always great to have you on set Thank after you. being in the courtroom today. Thank you for that.